symbols of American culture as iconic as the Ford Mustang. So making changes to the country's favorite sports car is a serious undertaking. When you are designing a new Mustang, you are the steward of 40 years of automotive history, remarked then head of Ford design Jay Mace in 2004 when the fifth generation Mustang was launched. If you don't get it right, you've got 8 million Mustang fans to answer to. While keeping the old and embracing the new might seem like a paradox, it's something that every generation of Mustang creators has to contend with. For Mace, chief engineer, how tight and designer said Drummond's the task ahead was considerable when plans began in 1999 for the fifth generation S197 Mustang. While the previous S95, also known as the New Age Mustang, has a generation specific body design, it was running on the long in tools box body platform that had been underneath the Mustang since 1979. With this in mind, all engineers looked at the DEW98 platform, which underpinned the Lincoln LS and resurrected retro style at Thunderbird. At the same time, Ford sought to overcome the shortfalls of the Fox body platform, which was mainly understeer caused by a front-end favorite weight distribution. Eventually, engineers' intentions of the DEW98 platform gave away to all new Mustang exclusive chassis that only contained trace elements of the DEW98 longer than its Fox body predecessor. The new D2C platform offered increased length to help with weight distribution. D2C meaning D-Class D2 two-door coupe offered back first and front struts and a solid rear axle. Ford's bean counters also didn't mind that two D C platform was cheaper to produce than the DEW98. So what is the S197 Mustang? An S197 Mustang is generationally nicknamed donating 204 to 2014 Mustangs. With the fundamentals in the workings, designers turned to the S197's outside. Seeking to capitalize on the length and platform, Mustang exterior focused on a long and lean loop that could be traced back to its first generation roots but still present a distinctive style. Dubbed a retro futuristic approach, the fifth generation then showcased a much body thanks to the extended hood and subtle wide fenders. The short horizontal grille and lower air intake also gave the S197 a wide and beefy stance. Of course, what's a Mustang without classic features? Designers created the S197 around the vertical twilight trailer and a non-functioning gas cap in the rear deck lid. The single headlights are reminiscent of Mustangs from the early 1970s. Inside, ends of previous gen dual cockpit are present. However, the crisp and angular elements of the exterior are carried over into the old new cabin. For the first time since its inaugural generation, the Mustang was primarily based on an old new design inside, outside and underneath. Even the factory in Flat Rock, Michigan was all new for the Mustang. Now let's go through some variations of the fifth generation Mustang that we have received through its production run. 2005 Mustang, which was launched in 2004 actually for the model year 2005, was the first S197 Mustang and it had specs including the base engine V6 trim with the old new SOHC. 4.0 liter cologne V6 making 210 horsepower and 240 pound feet of torque. An excellent performance bump from the previous year's 3.8 Porsche Rod 6 cylinder. It was only available on the GT. Upgraded power comes from the modular 4.6 V8, which was a factory rated 300 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. Of particular note is that this engine used a 3 valve setup for its overhead cam configuration with two intakes and one exhaust valve. A 3 valve engine could improve performance over a dual cam. V8. While not having the engineering complexity at expense of a quad valve power plant, a weak effort in the 3V Mustang history. Ford's marketing of the day touted that both engines are more than 50% cleaner than last year's. Also, these power plants are equipped with electronic throttle control and Mustang first. Other than limited run variants for the San Diego area and the New York Yankees, the 05 Mustang specs include no special additions. The 2007 Mustang line soldiered on minimal changes. It was noteworthy for the number of special 
additions. These efforts begin with the Shelby GT500 and its supercharged 5.4 litre V8, making 500 horsepower and 480 pound feet of torque. These were better numbers than what was offered by the same year Ferrari F430. Ford beats Ferrari again, who would have thought this Shelby could be ordered in white or black with a unique red stripe appearance package. Ford also offers a Shelby GT variant, which adds up to 25 horsepower and 10 pound feet of torque to the standard 07 Mustang specs for the GT's 4.6 litre 8. The GTH, this type in convertible form, is made available through selective Hertz locations. While a California special offers an appearance package for the GT, the 08 Mustang brought a new model year with a high intensive discharge LED headlights to the Mustang. And 18 inch wheels were now standard on the V6 models. For special editions, the British GT500 continues for 2008 with the Shelby GT slotting above the GT and above the GT500. In celebration of the 40th of the anniversary of the King of the Road Mustang, Ford offered the Shelby GT500 KR and its 450 horsepower. Significantly, the Bullet Mustang returned for the 08 performance with performance upgrades above the GT that include a reworked engine and suspension. Engine output is 315 and 325 pound feet of torque. The California Special carried on for another year and Ford offered the Warrior in Pink Special Edition appearance package that benefits breast cancer research through Susan G. Coleman for the cure. In 2010, Mustang entered the new decade with a refreshed exterior and upgraded interior. The blunter nose of the earlier 9 s 197s gave away to a more sculpted front end and a more modern headlight assembly. The back end received an update with reshaped vertical tri tail light. Inside, Ford upgraded the cabin with softer touch material and electronic features like a backup camera were available. The GT's 4.6 liter V8 received a performance bump to 315 horsepower and an 325 pound meter pound feet of torque, incorporating the engine's upgrades from the 09 cooler. The Shelby GT500 was the sole special edition for 2010. The supercharged beast could now produce 540 horsepower to be exact and 510 horsepower and do so in 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, a respectable time even by today's standards. In 2012, the Mustang specs continued essentially unchanged from the previous year with one significant expect exception, the Boss 302 Special Edition reintroduction. Offering 444 horsepower and 380 pound feet of torque, the Boss 302 offered an excellent performance alternative for someone who wanted more than a Mustang GT but did not want to go the full Shelby GT500. In 2013, as the S197 begins to enter its final phase, Ford sought to keep the Mustang relevant with a mild refresh and commitment to more power. A tweak front end reinforces the car's muscular appearance, with new taillights help sharpen up the rear. Breakthrough use comes in the form of the Shelby GT500, which now makes a snappy 662 horsepower and 631 pound feet of torque. No doubt there were a chance of take that Camaro and Challenger at Ford's HQ when the GT500 specs were in public. While almost seeming like an afterthought, GT receives an 8 horsepower bump to 420 in 2013 and was also the last year for the Boss 302. In 2014, this ended a 10-year run. This significant 10-year run is a great for any car model. At 2014, the last year of the S197 recognizes the important milestones this Mustang created in automotive history. The first genuinely 21st century Ford Pony car, a modern vehicle platform, and a remarkable engine design. Even the base model power plant. 2014 Mustangs carried over the unchanged specifications from the previous year.